Roland, I've been thinking just that you and I have been really privileged during our lives to see people come to faith yeah. in Christ in our, in our different contexts and different parts of the country indeed. Uh, but I suppose we should never really get over the fact that God brought us to faith in Christ. Yeah. I'm just going to take a couple of moments to share with the diocese so, something of my own story and uh, I suppose something as well of the work of the Holy Spirit in bringing people to Christ and, and bringing people to faith in Christ. I, I grew up in a, in, a, in a country parish in South Donegal where I was very privileged to be part of a very uh, happy, a hard-working uh, family that went to church uh, every Sunday. And uh, I, I, from an early age, I had a sense that God was real and a sense that God existed. And that was just part of upbringing within the context of Church of Ireland services week, week by week, really. And uh, the Reverend Billy Gibbons was my rector as a, as, as, a, as a boy. And there was a fancy dress thing happened in the church on one occasion, and I was dressed up as a child, as the Reverend Billy Gibbons' new, new curate. Um, uh, mind you, in my teenage years, that was the last thought on my mind, quite honestly, as looking back on it. But then I, I came to faith largely through the influence of, of others and seeing Christ at work in the lives of others and seeing the Holy Spirit of God at work in other people's lives and uh, particularly a group of young guys and how God had literally changed their lives and they had, they had something that I went after and, and wanted. So to make a long story short, I gave my life to Christ as a young man. And um, th then I remember when I eventually ended up in ministry and ended up called to ministry and ended up uh, as a curate in Marilyn. Roland Hutchinson was a, an evangelist uh, and so it was wonderful just to watch this man of God at work preaching in such a way and doing ministry in such a way that there was an expectation that people would be converted and that people would come to Christ. And in fact, you'd regularly be asked at a staff meeting uh, who you'd led to Christ recently. Uh, and so there was that expectation in ministry. And you know something, Roland, I, I really think we've lost something of that in the church, that we exist to bring people to Jesus. And we exist to make disciples for Christ. And uh, it, it's such a privilege uh, over the years. Uh, we're actually sitting on a, the very spot where whenever I was rector in Kilkeel, I had the privilege of praying with folks who subsequently gave their lives to Christ and came from a place of not knowing Christ to following Christ. And uh, saw in those years, people come to follow Jesus and to give their lives to Christ who are now in ministry. So that's been a, a, a real privilege. Uh, in in Woolafield, similarly, you know, I've seen people come to faith in Christ. But I think the difference in Woolafield was that not only did individuals come to Christ, but actually the Holy Spirit began to change a community. A community that was very much a, a pain community, very much a, a community that had suffered so much during the years of the Troubles. A community where there was incredible poverty. Uh, when people came to Christ, they often then brought others to Christ. Uh, and so you saw whole family networks coming to faith in Jesus. Uh, and again, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. It, it's, it's very little to do with you and me, actually. Uh, our, our call is to be faithful, really, isn't it, to, to, yeah. pr to preach Christ and actually to put evangelism at the very top of our agenda. My father-in-law, who taught me so much had a saying, he would say, if, we, if you don't put evangelism at the top of the agenda and keep it there, it'll fall off the bottom. And we really need to 
recover that, that in every church, in down into more diocese and beyond, that regularly there would be people becoming Christians, people giving their lives to Christ, people then becoming disciples of Christ and living their whole lives as followers of Jesus. It is a privilege, Roland, isn't it? It is a privilege. I think sometimes we imagine that it's us who choose to become a Christian, but actually it's the work of the Holy Spirit. And God's heart is actually to reach out to us. He, he wants us in a relationship with him. He desires that. And the Holy Spirit is always at work, drawing us to him, bringing us into that place. Because um, sometimes the Holy Spirit is misunderstood. Um, for some, it's almost like a, a country cousin who appears at uh, different times um, at um, Pentecost Sunday and uh, confirmations, and the rest of the time he's forgotten about. But really, the Holy Spirit is, is what's key for the church today. It's just what Jesus has left us with. It's his gift to us. And then there's others who have this idea that the uh, Holy Spirit is for the, the extreme brigade, the sort of the charismatics and the Pentecostals. But the Holy Spirit is for each one of us because who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God. He's the uh, third person of the Trinity. He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's as much God as the Father or Jesus is. And when we were created uh, at the very beginning, uh, in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, it tells us that uh, the Holy Spirit was, uh, it was there. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was uh, formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. See, when he created us, he created us as spiritual beings. Um, we were spiritual beings, but unfortunately at the fall, what happened was uh, Adam and Eve um, ate the forbidden fruit and they died that day. Didn't die physically at, at that time, but they died spiritually. The relationship with God was broken at that moment. And God from that moment on was putting a rescue plan into place. His desire was that we would be restored to him. We come back to a relationship with him. I love those verses from uh, Ezekiel chapter 36, and this is what God wants. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh, and give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and be careful to obey my rules. And that's restoring that relationship. It's, it's really what uh, uh, Jesus came into our world for. He came to forgive us our sins. He came to redeem us, to pay the price. Uh, the cross says all, his love for each one of us. And that's what he, he wants to bring uh, to us, uh, that relationship with God. There's a lovely story in John chapter three um, of uh, a man called Nicodemus and uh, Nicodemus was one of the uh, rulers, the spiritual rulers of the country. But uh, where everybody else was suspicious of Jesus, he had an understanding of who Jesus was. And he decided that one night he would come and meet with Jesus. And Jesus said to him something which was very, very strange, something that uh, it was hard for him to understand. This is what it says in John chapter 3. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they're old? Nicodemus asks. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. So everyone has to be born of the Spirit. The Spirit is what gives us new birth. Uh, it gives us a new relationship with uh, Jesus. And that Spirit is at work. It's a Spirit of, uh, which brings a spiritual transformation to us. Uh, in um, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they're a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. So 
That's what the Holy Spirit does. It brings us into that relationship. So important. And the wonderful thing is, no two stories are the same. Mm. And, but we need our story. It's important that we need our story because we all need that spiritual birth that uh, Jesus spoke of. So I would encourage you to tell others your story. Uh, tell others what Christ has done in your life and do so with an expectation that you will have the opportunity from time to time to lead others to Christ. And in our churches, let's again put evangelism at the top of the agenda and, and let's pray that the Holy Spirit would be at work bringing many people to faith in Christ in the months that lie ahead. Thank you.